Ayutthaya Kingdom, Wikipedia article audio. Fitsanyalok, Ayutthaya, Lopberai, Ayutthaya. Minority, Hinduism, Roman Catholic, Shia Islam, Sunni Islam. History Origins The Ayutthaya Kingdom, also spelled Ayutthaya or Ayodhya was a Siamese kingdom that existed from 1351 to 1767. Ayutthaya was friendly towards foreign traders, including the Chinese, Vietnamese, Portuguese, Indians, Japanese, Koreans, Persians, and later the Spaniards, Dutch, English, and French, permitting them to set up villages outside the walls of the capital, also called Ayutthaya. In the 16th century, it was described by foreign traders as one of the biggest and wealthiest cities in the East. The court of King Nere had strong links with that of King Louis XIV of France, whose ambassadors compared the city in size and wealth to Paris. By 1550, the kingdom's vassals included some city-states in the Malay Peninsula, Sukhothai, Lan Na, and parts of Burma and Cambodia. This part of the kingdom's history is sometimes referred to as the Ayutthaya Empire. In foreign accounts, Ayutthaya was called Siam but many sources say the people of Ayutthaya called themselves Thai, and their kingdom Krung Thai meaning the Thai country. It was also referred to as Ayutthaya in a painting that was requested by the Dutch East India Company. According to the most widely accepted version of its origin, the Thai state based at Ayutthaya in the valley of the Chao Phraya River rose from the earlier, nearby Lavo Kingdom and Suvarnabhumi. One source says that in the mid-14th century, due to the threat of an epidemic, King Athong moved his court south into the rich floodplain of the Chao Phraya River onto an island surrounded by rivers. The name of the city indicates the influence of Hinduism in the region. It is believed that this city is associated with the Thai national epic, the Ramakyan, which is the Thai version of the Ramayana. Conquests and Expansion Ayutthaya began its hegemony by conquering northern kingdoms and city-states like Sukhothai, 222 Kamphang Fet and Fitsanyalok. Before the end of the 15th century, Ayutthaya launched attacks on Angkor, the classical great power of the region. Angkor's influence eventually faded from the Chao Phraya River plain while Ayutthaya became a new great power. The emerging kingdom of Ayutthaya was also growing powerful. Relations between the Ayutthaya and Lan Na had worsened since the Ayutthayan support of Thao Choi's rebellion in 1451, Yadit Thira a noble of the kingdom of Sukhothai who had conflicts with Borame Trelo Khanat of Ayutthaya, gave himself to Tilakaraj. Yadit Thira urged Borame Trelo Khanat to invade Fitsanyalok, igniting the Ayutthaya Lan Na war over the upper Chao Phraya Valley. In 1460, the governor of Chael Yang surrendered to Tilakaraj. Borame Trelo Khanat then used a new strategy and concentrated on the wars with Lan Na by moving the capital to Fitsanyalok. Lan Na suffered setbacks and Tilakaraj eventually sued for peace in 1475. First Burmese Wars However, the kingdom of Ayutthaya was not a unified state but rather a patchwork of self-governing principalities and tributary provinces owing allegiance to the king of Ayutthaya under the circle of power, or the Mandala system, as some scholars suggested. These principalities might be ruled by members of the royal family of Ayutthaya, or by local rulers who had their own independent armies having a duty to assist the capital when war or invasion occurred. However, 
it was evident that from time to time local revolts, led by local princes or kings, took place. Ayutthaya had to suppress them. Due to the lack of succession law and a strong concept of meritocracy, whenever the succession was in dispute, princely governors or powerful dignitaries claiming their merit gathered their forces and moved on the capital to press their claims, culminating in several bloody coups. At the start of the 15th century, Ayutthaya showed an interest in the Malay Peninsula but the great trading ports of the Malacca Sultanate contested its claims to sovereignty. Ayutthaya launched several abortive conquests against Malacca which was diplomatically and economically fortified by the military support of Ming China. In the early 15th century the Ming Admiral Zheng He had established a base of operation in the port city, making it a strategic position the Chinese could not afford to lose to the Siamese. Under this protection, Malacca flourished, becoming one of Ayutthaya's great foes until the capture of Malacca by the Portuguese. Second Burmese Wars Starting in the middle of the 16th century, the kingdom came under repeated attacks by the Tonga dynasty of Burma. The Burmese-Siamese War began with Burmese an invasion and a failed siege of Ayutthaya. A second siege led by King Bayanong forced King Maha Chakrafat to surrender in 1564. The royal family was taken to Bago, Burma, with the king's second son Mahinthra Tharad installed as the vassal king. In 1568, Mahinthra Tharad revolted when his father managed to return from Bago as a Buddhist monk. The ensuing third siege captured Ayutthaya in 1569 and Bayanong made Mehatamarachatirat his vassal king. Downfall After Bayanong's death in 1581, Yuparaja Nerizuan proclaimed Ayutthaya's independence in 1584. The Thai fought off repeated Burmese invasions capped by an elephant duel between King Nerizuan and Burmese heir apparent Min Gswa in 1593 during the fourth siege of Ayutthaya in which Nerizuan famously slew Min Gswa. The Burmese-Siamese War was a Thai attack on Burma, resulting in the capture of the Tanan Therai region as far as Matama in 1595 and Lan Na in 1602. Nerizuan even invaded mainland Burma as far as Tongu in 1600, but was driven back. Government After Nerizuan's death in 1605, Northern Tanan Therai and Lan Na returned to Burmese control in 1614. The Ayutthaya Kingdom's attempt to take over Lan Na and Northern Tanan Therai in 1662-1664 failed. Kingship of Ayutthaya Kingdom Foreign trade brought Ayutthaya not only luxury items but also new arms and weapons. In the mid-17th century, during King Nerea's reign, Ayutthaya became very prosperous. In the 18th century, Ayutthaya gradually lost control over its provinces. Provincial governors exerted their power independently, and rebellions against the capital began. In the mid-18th century, Ayutthaya again became ensnared in wars with the Burmese. The Burmese-Siamese War begun by the Konbong dynasty of Burma failed. The Burmese-Siamese War resulted in the sack of the city of Ayutthaya and the end of the kingdom by Debelatio in April 1767. After a bloody period of dynastic struggle, Ayutthaya entered into what has been called the Golden Age, a relatively peaceful episode in the second quarter of the 18th century when art, literature, and learning flourished. There were foreign wars. 
Ayutthaya fought with the Engin lords for control of Cambodia starting around 1715. But a greater threat came from Burma, where the new Alapaya dynasty had subdued the Shan states. The last 50 years of the kingdom witnessed a bloody struggle among the princes. The throne was their prime target. Purges of court officials and able generals followed. The last monarch, Ikothat, originally known as Prince Anurak Montri, forced the king, who was his younger brother, to step down and took the throne himself. According to a French source, Ayutthaya in the 18th century included these principal cities, Martaban, Ligur, or Nakhon Sri Tom Mara, Tenasserim, Junxalan or Phuket Island, Singora, or Songkla. Her tributaries were Patani, Pahang, Perak, Kada and Malacca. Political Development In 1765, a combined 40,000 strong force of Burmese armies invaded the territories of Ayutthaya from the north and west. Major outlying towns quickly capitulated. The only notable example of successful resistance to these forces was found at the village of Bang Rajan. After a 14-month siege, the city of Ayutthaya capitulated and was burned in April 1767. Ayutthaya's art treasures, the libraries containing its literature, and the archives housing its historic records were almost totally destroyed, and the Burmese brought the Ayutthaya kingdom to ruin. Social Classes The Burmese rule lasted a mere few months. The Burmese, who had also been fighting a simultaneous war with the Chinese since 1765, were forced to withdraw in early 1768 when Chinese forces threatened their own capital. Men, the king wore Mungkut, as a headwear, round mandarin collar cover with Krui and wore Chong Kben, as a trouser, court officers, wore Lomphuk, as a headwear, Krui, and wore Chong Kben. With most Burmese forces having withdrawn, the country was reduced to chaos. All that remained of the old capital were some ruins of the royal palace. Provinces proclaimed independence under generals, rogue monks, and members of the royal family. One general, Freya Taksin, former governor of Tak, began the reunification effort. He gathered forces and began striking back at the Burmese. He finally established a capital at Thonburi, across the Chow Freya from the present capital, Bangkok. Taksin ascended the throne, becoming known as King Taksin or Taksin. Men, wore Mandarin collar shirt, have Mahat thai hairstyle and wore Chong Kben, women, wore the Zbei and Fanung. The ruins of the historic city of Ayutthaya and associated historic towns in the Ayutthaya Historical Park have been listed by UNESCO as World Heritage Site. The city of Ayutthaya was refounded near the old city, and is now capital of the Ayutthaya province. Ranking of Social Classes Military Culture and Society Religion The kings of Ayutthaya were absolute monarchs with semi-religious status. Their authority derived from the ideologies of Hinduism and Buddhism as well as from natural leadership. The king of Sukhothai was the inspiration of inscription one found in Sukhothai, which stated that King Ramkhamhang would hear the petition of any subject who rang the bell at the palace gate. The king was thus considered as a father by his people. Men, wore loincloth, displayed a naked chest, have mahad thai hair style, sometimes wore sarong or chong kben, women, wore the zbei and fanung. At Ayutthaya, however, 
the paternal aspects of kingship disappeared. The king was considered the Chakrafat who through his adherence to the law made all the world revolve around him. According to Hindu tradition, the king is the avatar of Vishnu, destroyer of demons, who was born to be the defender of the people. The Buddhist belief in the king is as righteous ruler, aiming at the well-being of the people and who strictly follows the teaching of Gautama Buddha. The king's official names were reflections of those religions, Hinduism and Buddhism. They were considered as the incarnation of various Hindu gods, Indra, Shiva, or Vishnu. The coronation ceremony was directed by Brahmins as the Hindu god Shiva was lord of the universe. However, according to the codes, the king had the ultimate duty as protector of the people and the annihilator of evil. According to Buddhism, the king was also believed to be a bodhisattva. One of the most important duties of the king was to build a temple or a Buddha statue as a symbol of prosperity and peace. 15th century fragment Michael Vickery version and Yabansia Thaifan version in pages 215-231, Van Vliet Chronicle translated and compiled by the Dutch merchant. The original Thai manuscripts disappeared, the Luang Prasoet version Ayutthaha history, CS 1136 version, the Nikeo version in pages 232-244, CS 1145 version, Pali Chronicle compiled by Farfanara, generally discussing Buddhism history of Thailand, CS 1157 version of Phan Chanthanumat, Thonburi Chronicle, Som De Farfanara version thought to be identical to Bradley version below, Kolehud Hakaravamsa Vol. 2 Pali Chronicle. Includes other three versions of the chronicle, for Chakrafat Defong version, Brith Museum version, Wat Banthalo version, Kolehud Hakaravamsa sermon. Includes other three versions of the chronicle. Bradley or two-volume version formerly called Krom from Paramanuchit Chinoro version. Or Volume 1, Paramanuchit's abridged version, Royal Autograph version Volume 1, Volume 2. For locals, another aspect of the kingship was also the analogy of the Lord of the Land or He who rules the earth. According to the court etiquette, a special language, Rach ASAP, was used to communicate with or about royalty. In Ayutthaya, the king was said to grant control over land to his subjects, from nobles to commoners, according to the Sakna or Sakdana system codified by King Borame Trelo Khanat. The Sakdana system was similar to, but not the same as feudalism, under which the monarch does not own the land. While there is no concrete evidence that this land management system constituted a formal palace economy, the French François Timoleon de Choisy, who came to Ayutthaya in 1685, wrote, The king has absolute power. He is truly the god of the Siamese, no one dares to utter his name. Another 17th century writer, the Dutchman Jan van Vliet, remarked that the king of Siam was honored and worshipped by his subjects second to God. Laws and orders were issued by the king. For sometimes the king himself was also the highest judge who judged and punished important criminals such as traitors or rebels. In addition to the Sakdana system, Another of the numerous institutional innovations of Borame Trelo Khanat was to adopt the position of Uparaja, translated as viceroy or prince, usually held by the king's senior son or full brother, in an attempt to regularize the succession to the throne a particularly difficult feat for a polygamous dynasty. In practice, there was inherent conflict between king and Uparaja and frequent disputed successions. However, it is evident that the power of the throne of Ayutthaya had its limit. 
the hegemony of the Ayutthaya king was always based on his charisma in terms of his age and supporters. Without supporters, bloody coups took place from time to time. The most powerful figures of the capital were always generals, or the minister of military department, Kalahum. During the last century of Ayutthaya, the bloody fighting among princes and generals, aiming at the throne, plagued the court. The reforms of King Borame Trelokhanat placed the king of Ayutthaya at the center of a highly stratified social and political hierarchy that extended throughout the realm. Despite a lack of evidence, it is believed that in the Ayutthaya kingdom, the basic unit of social organization was the village community composed of extended family households. Title to land resided with the headman, who held it in the name of the community, although peasant proprietors enjoyed the use of land as long as they cultivated it. The lords gradually became courtiers and tributary rulers of minor cities. The king ultimately came to be recognized as the earthly incarnation of Shiva or Vishnu and became the sacred object of politico-religious cult practices officiated over by royal court Brahmins, part of the Buddhist court retinue. In the Buddhist context, the Devaraja was a bodhisattva. The belief in divine kingship prevailed into the 18th century although by that time its religious implications had limited impact. Arts and Performances With ample reserves of land available for cultivation, the realm depended on the acquisition and control of adequate manpower for farm labor and defense. The dramatic rise of Ayutthaya had entailed constant warfare and, as none of the parties in the region possessed a technological advantage, the outcome of battles was usually determined by the size of the armies. After each victorious campaign, Ayutthaya carried a number of conquered people back to its own territory, where they were assimilated and added to the labor force. Ramathibadi II established a V system under which every freeman had to be registered as a fra with the local lords, Chownai. When war broke out, male fra were subject to impressment. Above the fra was a nai, who was responsible for military service, corvi labor on public works, and on the land of the official to whom he was assigned. Fra Sui met labor obligations by paying a tax. If he found the forced labor under his nai repugnant, he could sell himself as a that to a more attractive nai or lord who then paid a fee in compensation for the loss of corvi labor. As much as one-third of the manpower supply into the 19th century was composed of fri. Wealth, status, and political influence were interrelated. The king allotted rice fields to court officials, provincial governors, military commanders, in payment for their services to the crown according to the sake DNA system. The size of each official's allotment was determined by the number of commoners or fra he could command to work it. The amount of manpower a particular headman, or official, could command determined his status relative to others in the hierarchy and his wealth. At the apex of the hierarchy, the king, who was symbolically the realm's largest landholder, theoretically commanded the services of the largest number of fri, called fri Wang, who paid taxes, served in the royal army, and worked on the crown lands. However, the recruitment of the armed forces depended on Nai, or Mun Nai, literally meaning lord, officials who commanded their own fri Sam, or subjects. These officials had to submit to the king's command when war broke out. Officials thus became the key figures to the kingdom's politics. At least two officials staged coups, taking the throne themselves while bloody struggles between the king and his officials, followed by purges of court officials, were always seen. Literature Indian Influence on the Siamese Language 
Ramakien. King Trelok, in the early 16th century, established definite allotments of land and fra for the royal officials at each rung in the hierarchy, thus determining the country's social structure until the introduction of salaries for government officials in the 19th century. Outside this system to some extent were the Sangha, which all classes of men could join, and the overseas Chinese. Watts became centers of Thai education and culture, while during this period the Chinese first began to settle in Thailand and soon began to establish control over the country's economic life. The Chinese were not obliged to register for corvée duty, so they were free to move about the kingdom at will and engage in commerce. By the 16th century, the Chinese controlled Ayutthaya's internal trade and had found important places in the civil and military service. Most of these men took Thai wives because few women left China to accompany the men. A Thong was responsible for the compilation of a Dermastra, a legal code based on Hindu sources and traditional Thai custom. The Dermastra remained a tool of Thai law until late in the 19th century. A bureaucracy based on a hierarchy of ranked and titled officials was introduced and society was organized in a related manner. However, the caste system was not adopted. The 16th century witnessed the rise of Burma, which had overrun Chiang Mai in the Burmese-Siamese War of 1563-1564. In 1569, Burmese forces, joined by Thai rebels, mostly royal family members of Thailand, captured the city of Ayutthaya and carried off the whole royal family to Burma. Damaraja, a Thai governor who had aided the Burmese, was installed as vassal king at Ayutthaya. Thai independence was restored by his son, King Nairizuan, who turned on the Burmese and by 1600 had driven them from the country. Kun Chong Kun Fain, the Siamese epic folk poem. Determined to prevent another treason like his father's, Nairizuan set about unifying the country's administration directly under the royal court at Ayutthaya. He ended the practice of nominating royal princes to govern Ayutthaya's provinces, assigning instead court officials who were expected to execute policies handed down by the king. Thereafter royal princes were confined to the capital. Their power struggles continued, but at court under the king's watchful eye. To ensure his control over the new class of governors, Nairizuan decreed that all freemen subject to fra service had become fra wang, bound directly to the king, who distributed the use of their services to his officials. This measure gave the king a theoretical monopoly on all manpower, and the idea developed that since the king owned the services of all the people, he also possessed all the land. Ministerial offices and governorships and the sakedana that went with them were usually inherited positions dominated by a few families often connected to the king by marriage. Indeed, Marriage was frequently used by Thai kings to cement alliances between themselves and powerful families, a custom prevailing through the 19th century. As a result of this policy, the king's wives usually numbered in the dozens. Even with Nairizuan's reforms, the effectiveness of the royal government over the next 150 years was unstable. Royal power outside the crown lands in theory, absolute was in practice limited by the laxity of the civil administration. The influence of central government and the king was not extensive beyond the capital. When war with the Burmese broke out in late 18th century, provinces easily abandoned the capital. As the enforcing troops were not easily rallied to defend the capital, the city of Ayutthaya could not stand against the Burmese aggressors. Ayutthaya's military was the origin of the Royal Thai Army. 
The army was organized into a small standing army of a few thousand, which defended the capital and the palace, and a much larger conscript-based wartime army. Conscription was based on the first system, which required local chiefs to supply their predetermined quota of men from their jurisdiction on the basis of population in times of war. This basic system of military organization was largely unchanged down to the early Ratanakazan period. The main weaponry of the infantry largely consisted of swords, spears and bow and arrows. The infantry units were supported by cavalry and elephantry corps. Ayutthaya's main religion was Theravada Buddhism. However, many of the elements of the political and social system were incorporated from Hindu scriptures and were conducted by Brahmin priests. Many areas of the kingdom also practiced Mahayana Buddhism, Islam and influenced by French missionaries who arrived through China in the 17th century, some small areas converted to Roman Catholicism. The influence of Mahayana and Tantric practices also entered Theravada Buddhism, producing a tradition called Tantric Theravada. The natural world was also home to a number of spirits which are part of the Satsana Phi. Phi are spirits of buildings or territories, natural places, or phenomena, they are also ancestral spirits that protect people, or can also include malevolent spirits. The Phi which are guardian deities of places, or towns are celebrated at festivals with communal gatherings and offerings of food. The spirits run throughout Thai folklore. Phi were believed to influence natural phenomena including human illness and thus the bachi became an important part of people identity and religious health over the millennia. Spirit houses were an important folk custom which were used to ensure balance with the natural and supernatural world. Astrology was also a vital part to understanding the natural and spiritual worlds and became an important cultural means to enforce social taboos and customs. The myth and epic stories of Ramakien provide the Siamese with a rich source of dramatic materials. The royal court of Ayutthaya developed classical dramatic forms of expression called Khan and Lok Han. Ramakien played a role in shaping these dramatic arts. During the Ayutthaya period, Khan, or a dramatized version of Ramakien, was classified as Lakhan Nai or a theatrical performance reserved only for aristocratic audience. The Siamese drama and classical dance later spread throughout mainland Southeast Asia and influenced the development of high culture art in most countries, including Burma, Cambodia, and Laos. Historical evidence shows that the Thai art of stage plays must have already been highly evolved by the 17th century. Louis XIV, the Sun King of France, had a formal diplomatic relation with Ayutthaya's King Nere. In 1687, France sent the diplomat Simon de la Lauberie to record all that he saw in the Siamese kingdom. In his famous account Du Royaume de Siam, la Lauberie carefully observed the classic 17th century theatre of Siam, including an epic battle scene from a Khan performance and recorded what he saw in great detail. Architecture Notable Ayutthaya Architecture Sites The Siamese have three sorts of stage plays, that which they call Kone is a figure dance, to the sound of the violin and some other instruments. The dancers are masked and armed, and represent rather a combat than a dance. And though everyone runs into high motions, and extravagant postures, they cease not continually to intermix some word. Most of their masks are hideous, and represent either monstrous beasts, or kinds of devils. The show which they call Lacone is a poem intermix with epic and dramatic, which lasts three days, from eight in the morning till seven at night. 
They are histories in verse, serious, and sung by several actors always present, and which do only sing reciprocally. The Rabam is a double dance of men and women, which is not martial, but gallant, they can perform it without much tying themselves, because their way of dancing is a simple march round, very slow, and without any high motion, but with a great many slow contortions of the body and arms. Of the attire of Siamese Khan dancers, La Laubery recorded that, hose that dance in Rabam, and Cone, have gilded paper bonnets, high and pointed, like the mandarin's caps of ceremony, but which hang down at the sides below their ears, which are adorned with counterfeit stones, and with two pendants of gilded wood. Daily Life La Laubery also observed the existence of Muai Tai and Muai Laos, noting that they looked similar but the hand wrapping techniques were different. Clothing Economy Trade Currency Ayutthaya as international trading port Contacts with the West Contacts with East Asia Notable foreigners, 17th century Ayutthaya Image gallery Notes Citations The accomplishment and influence of Thai art and culture, developed during the Ayutthaya period, on the neighboring countries was evident in the observation of James Lowe, a British scholar on Southeast Asia, during the early Ratanakosan era, the Siamese have attained to a considerable degree of perfection in dramatic exhibitions and are in this respect envied by their neighbors the Burmans, Laos and Cambojans who all employ Siamese actors when they can got. Ayutthaya was a kingdom rich in literary production. Even after the sack of Ayutthaya in 1767, many literary masterpieces in the Thai language survived. However, Ayutthayan literature was dominated by verse composition, whereas prose works were reserved to legal matters, records of state affairs and historical chronicles. Thus, there are many works in the nature of epic poetry in the Thai language. The Thai poetical tradition was originally based on indigenous poetical forms such as Rai, Klong, Kap, and Klon. Some of these poetical forms notably Klong have been shared between the speakers of Thai languages since ancient time. Through Buddhist and Hindu influence, a variety of Chanda prosodic meters were received via Ceylon. Since the Thai language is monosyllabic, a huge number of loan words from Sankrit and Pali are needed to compose these classical Sanskrit meters. According to B.J. Terwil, this process occurred with an accelerated pace during the reign of King Boramitrelo Khanat who reformed Siam's model of governance by turning the Siamese polity into an empire under the Mandala feudal system. The new system demanded a new imperial language for the noble class. This literary influence changed the course of the Thai or Siamese language, setting it apart from other Thai languages by increasing the number of Sanskrit and Pali words drastically and imposing the demand on the Thais to develop a writing system that preserves the orthography of Sanskrit words for literary purpose. By the 15th century, the Thai language had evolved into a distinctive medium along with a nascent literary identity of a new nation. It allowed Siamese poets to compose in different poetical styles and mood from playful and humorous rhymed verses, to romantic and elegant klong and to polished and imperious chan prosodies modified from classical Sanskrit meters. Thai poets experimented with these different prosodic forms, producing innovative hybrid poems such as Lilit or Kap Hor Klong. The Thai thus developed a keen mind and a keen ear for poetry. To maximize this new literary medium, However, 
a rather intensive classical education in Pali was required. This made poetry an exclusive occupation of the noble classes. However, B.J. Terwil notes, citing a 17th century textbook Jindamani that scribes and common Siamese men, too, were encouraged to learn basic Pali and Sanskrit for career advancement. Most countries in Southeast Asia share an Indianist culture. Traditionally, therefore, Thai literature was heavily influenced by the Indian culture and Buddhist Hindu ideology since the time it first appeared in the 13th century. Thailand's national epic is a version of the Ramayana called the Ramakyan, translated from Sanskrit and rearranged into Siamese verses. The importance of the Ramayana epic in Thailand is due to the Thai's adoption of the Hindu religio-political ideology of kingship, as embodied by the Lord Rama. The Siamese capital, Ayutthaya, was named after the holy city of Ayodhya, the city of Lord Rama. Thai kings of the current dynasty from Rama VI forward, and retroactively, have been referred to as Rama to the present day. A number of versions of the Ramakyan epic were lost in the destruction of Ayutthaya in 1767. Three versions currently exist. One of these was prepared under the supervision King Rama I. His son, Rama II rewrote some parts for Khan drama. The main differences from the original are an extended role for the monkey god Hanuman and the addition of a happy ending. Many of popular poems among the Thai nobles are also based on Indian stories. One of the most famous is Anirudh Kem Chan which is based on an ancient Indian story of Prince Anuradha. In the Ayutthaya period, Folk tales also flourished. One of the most famous folk tales is the story of Kun Chong Kun Fain, referred to in Thailand simply as Kun Fain, which combines the elements of romantic comedy and heroic adventures, ending in high tragedy. The epic of Kun Chong Kun Fain revolves around Kun Fain, a Siamese general with superhuman magical power who served the king of Ayutthaya and his love triangle relationship between himself, Kun Chong, and a beautiful Siamese girl named Wan Thong. The composition of KCKP, much like other orally transmitted epics, evolved over time. It originated as a recreative recitation or sifa within the Thai oral tradition from around the beginning of the 17th century. Siamese troubadours and minstrels added more subplots and embellished scenes to the original storyline as time went on. By the late period of the Ayutthaya kingdom, it had attained the current shape as a long work of epic poem with the length of about 20,000 lines, spanning 43 Samit Thai books. The version that exists today was composed with Klon meter throughout and is referred to in Thailand as Nithan Kem Klon meaning a poetic tale. The Ayutthaya Buddhist temple falls into one of two broad categories, the stupa style solid temple and the prang style. The prangs can also be found in various forms in Sukhothai, Lop Berai, Bangkok. Sizes may vary but usually the prangs measure between 15 and 40 meters in height, and resemble a towering corn cob-like structure. Prangs essentially represent Mount Meru. In Thailand Buddha relics were often housed in a vault in these structures, reflecting the belief that the Lord Buddha is a most significant being in having attained enlightenment and having shows the path to enlightenment to others. Three clothing styles were evident in the Ayutthaya period. Each style depended on social class. 1. Court clothing, this type was a costume for the king, queen, concubines, and senior government officers. 2. The noble people clothing, 
This type of costume was for citizens who are very rich can wear this type costume. 3. Villagers Clothing The Thais never lacked a rich food supply. Peasants planted rice for their own consumption and to pay taxes. Whatever remained was used to support religious institutions. From the 13th to the 15th centuries, however, a remarkable transformation took place in Thai rice cultivation. In the highlands, where rainfall had to be supplemented by a system of irrigation that controlled the water level in flooded paddies, the Thais sowed the glutinous rice that is still the staple in the geographical regions of the north and northeast. But in the floodplain of the Chao Freya, farmers turned to a different variety of rice the so-called floating rice, a slender, non-glutinous grain introduced from Bengal that would grow fast enough to keep pace with the rise of the water level in the lowland fields. The new strain grew easily and abundantly, producing a surplus that could be sold cheaply abroad. Ayutthaya, at the southern extremity of the floodplain, thus became the hub of economic activity. Under royal patronage, Corvi labor dug canals on which rice was brought from the fields to the king's ships for export to China. In the process, the Chao Freya Delta mud flats between the sea and firm land hitherto considered unsuitable for habitation was reclaimed and placed under cultivation. Traditionally the king had a duty to perform a religious ceremony blessing the rice plantation. Although rice was abundant in Ayutthaya, Rice export was banned from time to time when famine occurred because of natural calamity or war. Rice was usually bartered for luxury goods and armaments from Westerners, but rice cultivation was mainly for the domestic market and rice export was evidently unreliable. Ayutthaya official used kauri shells, prakab, and pod duan as currency. Pod Duan became the standard medium of exchange from the early 13th century to the reign of King Kilalongkorn. Trade with Europeans was lively in the 17th century. In fact European merchants traded their goods, mainly modern arms such as rifles and cannons, with local products from the inland jungle such as sapan woods, deerskin, and rice. Tome Pires a Portuguese voyager, mentioned in the 16th century that Ayutthaya, or Odia, was rich in good merchandise. Most of the foreign merchants coming to Ayutthaya were European and Chinese, and were taxed by the authorities. The kingdom had an abundance of rice, salt, dried fish, arak, and vegetables. Trade with foreigners, mainly the Dutch reached its peak in the 17th century. Ayutthaya became a main destination for merchants from China and Japan. It was apparent that foreigners began taking part in the kingdom's politics. Ayutthayan kings employed foreign mercenaries who sometimes entered the wars with the kingdom's enemies. However, after the purge of the French in late 17th century, the major traders with Ayutthaya were the Chinese. The Dutch from the Dutch East Indies Company, were still active. Ayutthaya's economy declined rapidly in the 18th century, until the Burmese invasion caused the total collapse of Ayutthaya's economy in 1788. In 1511, immediately after having conquered Malacca, the Portuguese sent a diplomatic mission headed by Duarte Fernandes to the court of King Ramathibadi II of Ayutthaya. Having established amicable relations between the Kingdom of Portugal and the Kingdom of Siam, they returned with a Siamese envoy with gifts and letters to the King of Portugal. They were the first Europeans to visit the country. Five years after that initial contact, Ayutthaya and Portugal concluded a treaty granting the Portuguese permission to trade in the kingdom. 
A similar treaty in 1592 gave the Dutch a privileged position in the rice trade. Foreigners were cordially welcomed at the court of Nere, a ruler with a cosmopolitan outlook who was nonetheless wary of outside influence. Important commercial ties were forged with Japan. Dutch and English trading companies were allowed to establish factories, and Thai diplomatic missions were sent to Paris and The Hague. By maintaining all these ties, the Thai court skillfully played off the Dutch against the English and the French, avoiding the excessive influence of a single power. In 1664, However, the Dutch used force to exact a treaty granting them extraterritorial rights as well as freer access to trade. At the urging of his foreign minister, the Greek adventurer Constantine Fokin, Nere turned to France for assistance. French engineers constructed fortifications for the Thais and built a new palace at La Berry for Nere. In addition, French missionaries engaged in education and medicine and brought the first printing press into the country. Louis XIV's personal interest was aroused by reports from missionaries suggesting that Nere might be converted to Christianity. The French presence encouraged by Fokin, however, stirred the resentment and suspicions of the Thai nobles and Buddhist clergy. When word spread that Nere was dying, a general, Fitrika Stage coup d'état, the 1688 Siamese Revolution, seized the throne, killed the designated heir, a Christian, and had Fokin put to death along with a number of missionaries and expelled the remaining foreigners. Some studies said that Ayutthaya began a period of alienation from Western traders, while welcoming more Chinese merchants. But other recent studies argue that, due to wars and conflicts in Europe in the mid-18th century, European merchants reduced their activities in the East. However, it was apparent that the Dutch East Indies Company or VOC was still doing business in Ayutthaya despite political difficulties. Dutch East India Company Merchant Ship Memorial played in La Berry showing King Nere with French ambassadors. The French ambassador Chevalier de Chaumont presents a letter from Louis XIV to King Nere. Constance Fokin is seen kowtowing in the lower left corner of the print. Siamese Embassy to Louis XIV in 1686, by Nicolas Larmison. Between 1405 and 1433, the Chinese Ming Dynasty sponsored a series of seven naval expeditions. Emperor Yongle designed them to establish a Chinese presence, impose imperial control over trade, and impress foreign peoples in the Indian Ocean Basin. He also might have wanted to extend the tributary system. It is believed that the Chinese fleet under Admiral Zheng he traveled up the Chao Phraya River to Ayutthaya on three occasions. Meanwhile a Japanese colony was established in Ayutthaya. The colony was active in trade, particularly in the export of deer hides and sapan wood to Japan in exchange for Japanese silver and Japanese handicrafts. From Ayutthaya Japan was interested in purchasing Chinese silks, as well as deerskins and ray or shark skins. The Japanese quarters of Ayutthaya were home to about 1,500 Japanese inhabitants. The community was called Ban Yupun in Thai, and was headed by a Japanese chief nominated by Thai authorities. It seems to have been a combination of traders. Christian converts who had fled their home country to various Southeast Asian countries following the persecutions of Toyotomi Hideyoshi and Tokugawa Ieyasu, an unemployed former samurai who had been on the losing side at the Battle of Sekigahara. 
Padre Antonio Francisco Cardam recounted having administered sacrament to around 400 Japanese Christians and 1,627 in the Thai capital of Ayutthaya there were also Japanese communities in Ligur and Patani. Early 17th century Chinese woodblock print, thought to represent Zhenghe's ships. A 1,634 Japanese Red Seal ship. Tokyo Naval Science Museum The Japanese quarter in Ayutthaya is indicated at the bottom center of the map. Portrait of Yamada Nagamasa C.1630 Detached Buddha head encased in fig tree roots. Seated Buddha, Ayutthaya Seated Buddha, Ayutthaya Subject, Art History Subject, Buddhist Literature Subject, History Subject, Buddhist Literature Subject, Urban Planning There are 18 versions of Royal Chronicles of Ayutthaya known to scholars. Chronicle of the Kingdom of Ayutthaya Tokyo, the Center for East Asian Cultural Studies for UNESCO the Toyo Bunko. pp. Introduction, 14. ISBN 978-4-89656-613-0. Some of these are available in Cushman, Richard D. The Royal Chronicles of Ayutthaya, a synoptic translation, edited by David K. Wyatt. Bangkok. The Siam Society. These are Burmese historical accounts of Ayutthaya. Dissertations retrieved from ProQuest dissertations and theses on August 16, 2006. Fong Sawaden Krung S.I. Ayutthaya. Burmese account. Western account. Kem Hai Kin Chow Krung Kao. Kem Hai Kin Kun Lwang Hawat an English translation, Palm Leaf Manuscripts No. 11997 of the University's Central Library Collection or Yudaya Yaze when available in English in Tun Ong Chain Tr. Chronicle of Ayutthaya, Yangon, Myanmar Historical Commission.